Happy Mother's Day again. Glad that you're here to worship with us today. I got a Mother's Day present. I had uh, the mother of my children come home from the hospital, so that was a praise the Lord. Ms. Kathy, won't you come? I've had an opportunity to say a lot of thank yous and appreciate your prayers. We've seen so many miracles and all this, but I wanted to give her an opportunity. She wanted to say thank you as well. Well. <laughs> I want you to know that I believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. Always have, but I really do now. <laughs> it's, and uh, I'm so grateful for each of you who interceded to the Father on my behalf. And for the doctors and the nurses. You have no idea. I made sure. I want you to know. I made sure that every test. <laughs> every blood draw, every CAT scan, every EKG, every person who tended to me, I let them know that you were praying for me. Amen. And I let them know that people were praying around the world for me. And I said, but, oh. And they would say, oh, that's really good, Miss Kathy. That's great. We all need prayer. And I said, well, good, <laughs> because guess what? <laughs> they are praying for you. And, um, and it's important that we do that. You yes, know, we put that in our prayer request and pray for the doctors and the nurses to have wisdom and, as they care yeah. for the patients and for the person that we're particularly lifting up. And we need to be careful to do that because they are bombarded. I, I saw it firsthand. They are so overwhelmed. But when I would tell them that, the nurses might say, oh, this doctor, he needs prayer. And I'd say, well, guess what, girlfriends? <laughs> They're praying for you, too. <laughs> you know, and so it, it was kind of a jovial matter, and some of them didn't know how to handle it. Right. But it's important that they knew that they were being prayed for as well. And so I am grateful for all that God did. I want you to know from the moment that the nurse, from the moment the nurse told me that my x-ray said, you don't have bronchitis. Your bronchitis is cleared up, but your heart looks large. And she said, you're short-waisted. You know, and sometimes in short-waisted people, the heart tends to sit backwards. And that might be what I'm seeing, that I think your heart's enlarged. So hmm, we're going to do an EKG. So they didn't do one, they did three in the doctor's office. So she came in and she said, she turned it over and she brought three, three other PAs with her. And she said, you need to sit down for a minute. And she drew on a line, and you know how you see on medical shows the do 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 you know, <laughs> for your heartbeat? Well, she explained to me that first little do do above the line is the upper chamber of your heart. Then the big one above and below is when the blood flushes into the lower chamber. Then the little do do at the end is when it goes out into your arteries, into your body. She turned mine over. I had no doo -doo at the beginning. The upper chamber of my heart wasn't beating 90 beats a minute. It was fluttering 350 to 400, so it wasn't even reading on the scale. So the lower chamber was beating somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 beats a minute, but things weren't working right. And she said, um, you're not going anywhere. We're going to call your husband. You can't go home, you can't pass a go, you can't collect $200, you're going straight to the ER. And I want you to know from the very moment, I was not afraid. Amen. I knew I couldn't breathe and I really thought I had bronchial pneumonia. I thought my bronchitis had progressed. I just couldn't breathe. Couldn't even sweep a small area of the floor in, in my mother-in-law's house before LR came home from the hospital. So. I was never afraid, and even okay. one of the young nurses sat with me and she said, Mrs. Arms, can I, can I pray with you? So from the very beginning, I was covered in prayer, Amen. covered in it, and she prayed the most magnificent prayer over me. And um, so through the whole process, I got to share with the doctors and nurses that they, as I was being prayed for, they were being prayed for. I had incredible, incredible care at St. Luke's. I highly recommend them. <laughs> if you ever have to go for a serious thing, go to St. Luke's. But uh, I didn't face fear and did not face fear until they wheeled me into the room where the ablation was going to take place. And so you see, I've got four punctures here. They couldn't <laughs> find the way into my artery. My veins like to run and hide, and so I am 
bruise from stem to stern. I bear in my mark, my body the marks. <laughs> but when they rolled me into the room, the, the lab where they were going to be doing the ablation procedure, I faced fear for the first time. And almost immediately, the Lord gave me three scriptures. One was, um, at what time? At what, <laughs> what I used to teach my children when they were afraid. At what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And to be still and know that I am God. I couldn't do anything but be still. <laughs> I knew the presence of the Lord wash over me. And the third one was, thou wilt keep him in perfect Amen. peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And Sarah, Sarah, are you here? No. Sarah Acker here? Not Acker, weird. My niece, my niece sent us a song. Her, I got a song from, from Sarah. When I was in CCU, it was my, it became my clarion song. So the Lord that was, I will trust in you. And it was the most amazing song that has never been heard before. It's not been recorded. Just she and this fella that wanted the devil boards, he wanted to do a song with her. And they sent it to me. And it was my, you can tell her, Terry. <laughs> it was my clarion call. I sang in my mind as they put me to sleep. I sang with Sarah. <laughs> and that song, I will trust in you. When everything comes against you. So, to close it down, there's so much more I could tell you about the miracles that God did on my behalf. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Amen. And any time you need prayer, any time you feel like something's not right, get it checked out. But any time you feel like you need prayer for any situation, I'm your girl. Amen. You call on me. Amen. I love you. Praise the Lord. Don't leave just yet. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Your prayers have been quite incredible, and uh, we have so many witnesses to the grace of God. They shouldn't be seated. But, uh, you know, pastors' wives, preachers' wives, ministers' wives, they're so often overlooked. And long before we got to Mother's Day, uh, we had a staff retreat back in August, as we always do. Our staff decided, you know, when it comes to this Mother's Day, there's probably three ladies that we ought to honor, especially on this Mother's Day. And I'm just glad that one of them could be here for this today. There's two other, Rebecca Strickland, where are you? Why don't you, Tim, why don't you bring her up here? Tim, let's bring Amy up here, with you? And I want them to come up here today. Behind every good preacher, there's a good woman pushing him <laughs> to make him what he needs to be. We have a, a rose for you today and also a special gift card. We want to present you ladies today and thank you for uh, being and doing and surrendering to the call that God's had on your life these years and doing what God has called you to do because so much of what you do is so unseen by so many people. And uh, if these gentlemen here will... Be honest, you know, they only get about 40% of the credit, all right? That 60% goes to the wife. Really, 100% goes to the Lord, but thank God for these women and your ministries through the years of this church. You know, I've been serving the Lord many, many years. I won't give away ages or anything, but uh, behind the scenes, just serving, being part of, and uh, working for the Lord. And, you know, I want you all to give them one big round of applause again, would you? Thank you so much, ladies. We love you. Happy Mother's Day to you three. God bless you. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came to church today? Amen. I don't have a lengthy sermon. Some of y'all saw me show up early from the Magnolia campus. You wondered if I just didn't preach. But I do have 10 things I do want to say. And I'll probably a couple sentences under each one of those 10 things. If we talk about Mother's Day, there's certainly a day that we honor and celebrate our mothers and motherhood. But more than that, as a believer's fellowship, we wanted to take this day to make it a day of encouragement for you. That you and you come to this place today and you sit down to hear the word preached at uh, 
uh, be something you can walk around with something to value in your heart saying, yes, God touched my life. God ministered to me in a very special way today. Motherhood is difficult. We don't need to go into all the details of that. You know better than anybody else. Maybe for the men we ought to. I'm not sure. Or the children we ought to. Uh, I, I just saw that recently published deal after some uh, woman had talked about one of the presidential candidates' wives just being a mother, you know, uh, and kind of as a slam to that, who probably didn't understand what was going on at all. The recent study that came out said how many hours that mothers put in. If it's your working mother, you know, there's, it's, it's not a 40-hour work week. It's, it's a 96 to 100-hour work week. If you're a stay-at-home mother, it's like 106 to 108 hours. They were saying it was, was involved in the process. But uh, the value in the dollars, of course, that's the material world we live in, would say, you know, that if you hired somebody to replace your wife and what she does in the family with the children, it cost you about $104,000 a year. Tell your husband right now, you'll take half. <laughs> Amen. But there is uh, so much that's involved in, in being a mother. You know, so often she has to do so many duties that are so unappreciated. And, you know, from just the work at home, dropping kids off, seeking night and day to be the, the influence in uh, their children's life and her husband's life that she needs to be and wants to be in her life. Then you think about even mothers today who have to raise children without the support of a husband perhaps widowed or divorced or a military wife, all the, t all the heaviness and all the things that are involved in that, the difficulty of that, uh, the emotional trauma of just, you know, desiring to bond with your child that, that a mother goes through and to, to be the mother for that child. And when, especially in the culture we live in where so many moms have to work to support a household where you have to drop that child off for hours during the day, the, the heartache, the frustration, the anxiety that comes out of all those things. These are difficult days to be a mother in. And it's, it's a lot to ask one person. So what I want to do today was to share some what I call just truths for mom and give you 10 principles from the Word of God I really believe will be an encouragement to you. And remember, these are not uh, Dr. Phil's sayings or whatever it might be. This is the Word of God. And the Word of God is sure and it's everlasting. When God says something, you need to embrace it and to believe it and to trust it because the Bible does offer strength. It offers hope. It offers everything you need. And these truths, I hope you won't forget at least a couple of them you'll embrace today. And maybe there's one of these or two of these that will really speak to your heart, even though I believe all ten will in some fashion. The first is, is pretty simple. As long as you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have a constant companion. It doesn't matter what kind of valley you may walk through in your life. And You've heard me say it on multiple occasions. There are things we all go through in life that no one really else goes with us. And we have to endure it ourselves or walk through it ourselves. And although people may try to comprehend or try to have compassion or relate or even pray for us, that's still those valleys you walk alone. And I really believe that probably there's more of those valleys for mothers than there are for others and because of just the, the, the call that God has on their life. But even no matter what you experience, you may experience the loss of your husband. You are never ever alone according to the scripture. Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. From that moment that you surrender your life to Christ to the, to, throughout eternity, there's never going to be a moment that Christ is not going to be there. Jesus said, I am with you always. And although he sits at the right hand of God the Father, he has sent the Holy Spirit to you to be there with you. You, you, you may face lonely times, but you're never alone. And you need to learn to embrace the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in every situation of your life. The second point is this. You will always have the Spirit of God to comfort you. Same context where Jesus is speaking to the disciples about having to go. He says, you know, the Helper's going to come. And uh, when he comes, the Father's going to send him in my name. He's going to teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. In other words, as a mother, there are times when you need absolute, heavenly, supernatural help and assistance from God. God says, you have it. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. The Holy Spirit is there to remind you. In fact, I love the way he calls him the comforter in one place and he calls him the helper in another place. In other words, no matter what it is in your life, whatever you're going to have to deal with, and it may be something in your life at this moment, as a mom you're having to deal with, hey, you have the great supernatural presence of God in your life to be your helper. And in context with that, and first five kind of all intermingle with these, but it's, it's an important principle. The third thing is you always have God to supply all of your needs. Most of us know Philippians 4:19 that says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In other words, God said, I am the need meter. Now, obviously, being a mom, 
There's a multitude of needs that you experience in your life every day, and there's many times, perhaps, that you just think, hey, I, I, I just, you know, I'm just, I'm wore out. I don't know if I can do this anymore. I think I'm about ready to quit trying. I've done my best. My husband doesn't seem to pay attention to me right now. My kids aren't respecting me. It doesn't seem anybody really appreciates everything I'm doing for the rent. Nobody understands. Everybody takes me for granted. I won't ask for a raise of hands, but how many women have felt that way? There's those times you come to, amen, that you just have to deal with those things. But God says, listen, not only are you not alone, you have me to meet the needs of your life. I, I love the way he puts it here in Scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, 12, when, when he kind of wraps it up and he says, you know, we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. God says, not only do I meet your needs, I'm going to show you how to have those needs met. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to come into you. He's going to be a part of your life. He's going to be your comfort. He's, go he's going to be your, your constant companion. But not only that, he's going to be the one who's going to show you how the needs can be met in your life. Because many times we know we have a need, but we just don't know how the, the, how the resource is going to become available to meet that need. And here's what the Lord said. Hey, if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit of God resides in your life so that when you experience these times, maybe for its discouragement, maybe it's hopelessness, maybe it's just worn out, you can remember this, that God has made a promise to provide everything you need in your life and you need to pause in that moment and embrace what he said to you the fourth thing mom is this you're always going to have the Holy Spirit to guide you into truth more often than not mothers question their decisions sometimes feeling lonely sometimes feeling a sense of helplessness because they just don't know where to turn to what direction to go in at some particular point or decision process in their life John 16 13 tells us and the spirit of truth this comforter, this helper, this ever-present person, the presence of God in your life, he is going to guide you into truth. In other words, God has an answer for your dilemma. God has an answer for the, for the direction that you're looking for. God has an answer for the situation that you might be in. But whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever your circumstances, you need to understand this. You don't have to make tough decisions and difficult decisions by yourself. Because the presence of God is promised there and he promises to assist you, to guide you, to make the right decisions in whatever it might be. And I know there's multitudes of, of decisions every day in mothers from the smallest things about, you know, what to do about a bill or what to do about a, uh, a differing temperaments with your children who one thing seems to work on one and doesn't work on the other to the issues of, of what doctor you're going to go see if you have a problem in your life. But the Lord says, I'm here to guide you. I'm here to minister to you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to comfort you. And when you allow him to do so, the Holy Spirit of God becomes your constant source of comfort, help, and counsel, and strength. The ever-present help, the scripture says, in time of need. And I know it's sometimes it's easy to forget that. But along the lines, again, each one of these have to do ultimately, the first five do, with the, with the presence and the ministry and the companionship and the assistance of the Holy Spirit in your life. So number five is this one. God has given you a perfect spiritual gift. When you got saved, when you gave your life to Christ, if that's happened in your life, not only has the Holy Spirit, you know, come into your life, he's given you a gift. First, uh, Ephesians talks about that we were saved, he, he comes into our life and he seals us as his children with that eternal seal that, that we are his children forever. The Bible also says if you read all of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about spiritual gifts and how that God gives every Christian a spiritual gift. And the Bible says God doesn't give the same gift to everybody. He gives the gifts as he desires to give them. And by the way, as he gives them whatever his desire he is, he, to over you is, to give you whatever gift he gives you, it is the right gift. God doesn't make mistakes. He always gives the perfect spiritual gift. Now, you may be a mother who has some real demanding children, and you're thinking, you know, what I need is the gift of mercy, <laughs> and I need it now. You may be that mom who says, I'm a little too merciful. I need the gift of a prophet because I need to exercise a little wrath on these children. <laughs> you may be that mom who just looks around the house and everything's in an absolute mess, it seems, and out of order, and you're thinking, what I need is the, the gift of administration. But I want you to know that whatever the need is, God promises to meet your need, but he has given you whatever gift you really need, and you just need to trust him for that. And he will, he, will, he will enact that in your life and energize that in your life, and you'll flow in the gift that he's given you and work in the gift you've given you. And all the other areas that may seem a deficiency in your life, you begin to discover that Christ is all in all. 
And at the very moment you give your heart and life to him, he becomes specific as to what your needs are and he meets that need so that you can be what God's called you to be, so you can be the godly mother, so you can be the godly woman, so you can be a godly wife, whatever that gift might be. Now that, those first five deal with the presence of God's spirit in your life. And what an important principle to remember. It's one thing to know it in your mind, but it's another thing to embrace it and recall it and confess it and trust. So in, in line with those five things, I want you to get number six especially. Prayer works. And we just heard a great testimony of how prayer works. So, you know, in regard to Kathy's first diagnosis with doctors, we, we were expecting, one, uh, removal of a gallbladder within the next 48 hours. Two, we were expecting them, what they were acting like is to cut her open, do open heart surgery, replace valves, repair valves. We've been told from everything, but they're just flopping there and blood's flowing back to the upper chambers of the heart. All the ultrasounds showed it. All the testing showed it. And then people began to pray. Every time the doctors came back after running another test, they were scratching their head. Uh, I don't think we're going to have to do that gallbladder surgery. Next time back, uh, I don't think we're going to have to replace those valves. They are leaking, but I don't think we're going to have to replace them. Next time back, I don't think you're going to need any valve repair. They're not leaking like we thought. Now, they're still running tests and they're looking at it on ultrasound and seeing exactly what's going on. It just keeps getting better. Coming out of surgery, I'm talking to the doctor. Well, how about the valves we want to replace? Don't need to replace them, don't need to repair them. We don't need to do anything to them, they're fine. Prayer works. Amen. Amen. Prayer works. And many times with the last resort instead of the first effort, when it ought to be in all the situations of our life, and especially for moms who deal with so many deals and so many big items and big stuff in life, it relates to the, so many different issues in life, you have got to be a woman of prayer. Our ladies' retreat, what a perfect topic for our ladies' retreat over this last weekend with all the issues of prayer. But it is the most important thing, but not only is it the most important thing, it is the most effective thing, it is the most far-reaching thing that any mom can do in her life, anything she could do for a for her family, for, for her husband, for her children, for her grandchildren. The greatest thing for a woman can do for them ultimately is to seek God's face and to pray, to pray for your sons, to pray for your daughters. And those prayers should include the obvious specifics. Lord, you guide them. Let, them. let them know you. Bring them to a relationship with you. Then grow them up. And then, Lord, that they might pursue your will in their vocation and in their life and in their marriage the rest of their life. Find who they have in life for them. And that when they have children, they'll raise godly children. Your prayers include all those things, but as well as the issues of everyday living. But the good thing about it is you're not just praying to pray some prayers and somehow win some kind of favor with God. Prayer is the avenue by which we meet with God, by which we embrace God, by which we share with God where we're at and what's going on. Yes, he knows, but the Bible says we have not if we ask not. So what do we do? We ask. We ask in faith and we ask believing and we ask anything according to his will. The Bible says we know that he hears us and grants to us the petitions that we desire of him. Prayer works. Now, I shared with you a little bit last week after about three weeks of absolute fatigue and, and just, you know, then another week of just paramount emotional ups and downs with all that we were going through with hospitals and uh, attending to everything that was going on. And I don't know if it came out or not, but one thing I wanted to make sure you understood and that I experienced in my own life after just talking to the Lord and dealing with the Lord. I had to go home those first days and get some stuff and some clothes together and take a shower and lay down for a couple of hours and then head back to the hospital because I was up there most of the time and most of the evenings. But I just kind of fell on the bed and was kind of sobbing before the Lord because I didn't even know what to pray. We've all been in those kind of situations, I believe. And if you haven't, you're headed there sooner or later. So you might learn this principle now instead of later. But just not even knowing what to pray, just kind of blurbering before the Lord. Uh, and that's really what it got down to. This, in the midst of my just moaning like that before the Lord and groaning before the Lord, this passage came to mind. It says, the Spirit will help our infirmities, our weakness. So that we do not know what we ought to pray for, the Spirit himself will intercede for us with groans and words that cannot be expressed. Boy, that scripture just came so alive as I was in that moment of just turmoil before the Lord that, hey, God was doing something here in my midst. And even though I didn't know what to pray, he knew what to pray for me on my behalf. And the Holy Spirit would pray for And the Holy Spirit not only guides us in this way, the Bible also says that Jesus stands and makes intercession for us. So all I could do in the midst of that was just say, thank you, Lord. 
Thank thee that you give us what we need in every situation. And there may be times in your life like that, moms, that you just get, you just, I don't even know what to pray anymore in this regard. But you can trust that that hurting and that aching and that moaning and that groaning of the internal man is the Holy Spirit making intercession for you on your behalf. And you just need to end it up with thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Prayer works. Number seven, ladies, especially write this down. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation for mamas who are in Christ Jesus. And it seems one thing about motherhood, that one thing that kind of goes hand in hand with motherhood is guilt. Am I doing it right? Did I do enough? Did I say that? Did I overreact? Did I underreact? Did, and and all, Satan, is, you know, he's the accuser of the brethren, and the brethren is the generic. It means the brethren and the sister and the mother, and amen. He, 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 just, he hates you, he wants to do everything to, to make you feel guilty, to sense some sort of inadequacy in your life, that you're just not getting it done, or you don't have what you need. You wish you could do better, sometimes you feel, I just don't know how to do better. Don't you know, you know the, God sent his Holy Spirit into your life. He's in your heart, and he will convict you if you don't do right. It's his job to convict us of sin when we're not right. But even though he may convict you of sin, there's one thing that he will never do. And one thing, one thing is he will never condemn you. So if you're sensing any kind of condemnation, it might be coming from your own flesh or coming from Satan because he will continue to do that. He's the accuser of the brethren, but it's not from God. And you need to look to your heavenly father in those times where you're sensing some sort of condemnation in your life and thank God for his tender mercies because he is there to aid, to assist, to be the helper, to be the comforter. And it, it won't be of any help for you in your spiritual journey and it won't help you in being a mother or being a wife if you're the kind of person who chooses to embrace the guilt instead of the grace. So hold on to the grace of God. Those people around you that God's put in your ministry zone, your children, your husband, they, they need encouragement, but you realize you're getting encouragement as well. In order for you to get that encouragement, you have to reject any kind of spirit of condemnation in your life and say, Lord, I'm trusting you in all these things. Number eight, you super women out there, you don't have to do it all. And sometimes I believe that mothers feel this sense of pressure that they have to get it all done, you know. And God knows... You can never muster up all the strength you need to fight your daily battles on your own. And if you'll learn to take those first five points about the presence of the Holy Spirit and His ministry in your life, then it'll bring some release and, and some freedom in your life. Your days begin early. Most of you end up with late days. You know, you're thinking of all the things that get done. You got the old dishes. You got the same floors. Then you wash those dishes yesterday. Yeah, you get to do them again. Then I mop that floor last week. Yes, then I sweep it last week. It's the same old everything. And sometimes you get weary and all that. You're sitting there and you're mopping that floor and you think, man, if I live in this house another 40 years, I gotta mop this house another 40 years. Listen, that's enough to discourage anyone unless you really understand it's not about diapers and dishes. It's in about, it isn't about flowers and in the garden and curtains on the windows. You know what God wants you to do in your home first and foremost? Be the mother. And be the wife that he's called you to be. And he just desires that you express his love and his mercy and his grace to your family. And that only comes by those first points we talked about, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Out of that relationship with him comes the joy, the love, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the good, the faithfulness, the gentleness, the self-control. All that you need to be all God's called you to be. First and foremost, that's the priority. God will take care of a lot of things. And it may be some nights, you know, don't try to convince Kathy, I'm still working on this. All the dishes don't have to be done every night. The senator, the president, the premier, they're not all coming, the prime minister, they're not coming in the morning. She thinks they may. She says Jesus may come tomorrow, she wants the house clean. <laughs> try to tell her, that's the last thing on his mind when he comes. Amen. Amen. And I know there's, there's ladies that are in this room like that. But sometimes, you know, you say, well, my husband, hey, tell him to take a chill pill. Take a chia pill, honey. It's going to be all right. Those dishes will be in the morning. Focus on your kids while you have your kids. Every person in here who's now looking at grandkids and great-grandkids know those kids went by so fast. Yes. Yes. It was just gone. The ninth thing, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's God's temple. And I say that because you're living in a world, you know, that, that, that harasses you. 
Always trying to make you feel that you have to look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, and have, especially have, you know, a certain waistline, a certain size, a certain shape, you know, and everywhere you go down the grocery store aisles, the TV, the media, you know, it's all out there to condemn you for not looking like somebody else that they've paintbrushed and put on a, on a magazine cover. God created you to be you, not somebody else. And what you need in life is, is, is your walk and your relationship to him. You have a responsibility, yes, to keep your body healthy and to take care of yourself. The Bible says your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit whom you have from God. You're not your own, all right? You've been bought with a price. Therefore, you know, glorify God in your body. So your body is there to glorify God. But your beauty doesn't come from the external. Your beauty comes from the internal. Your beauty comes from a gentle spirit, not a waistline. And a woman who fears the Lord is to be greatly to be praised, the Scripture says. And there's something about a woman who is greatly fears the Lord and honors the Lord with her life. There's a beauty that exudes from her life that the world cannot, cannot duplicate. It you can't be found in Maybelline. It can't be found in mascara. It can't be found in the beauty products. It can't be found in hair color. It's only found in the grace of God. And you focus on the inside. Take care of the outside. But Almighty God will make your countenance uniquely and irresistibly attractive. And only God can be the witness to that. And people say, where's that come from? It comes from a walk with God comes from a walk with God. My wife and I, we just celebrated 37 years this last Friday of marriage. We praise the Lord for that. <laughs> On that day, I'm hoping we'll get to go home. But the day before, I'm sitting in an emergency room or in an operating room, and she's in the, uh, the laboratory of the operating room for the heart catheterization things. And, uh, you know, I got to think, I, don't, I hadn't even got a Mother's Day card, you know, or much less an anniversary card. But I was covered because he hadn't had time, she hadn't had time to either, so praise the Lord. <laughs> Not one of those regular deals where I'm thinking last minute, where's Walgreens kind of thing. <laughs> but I just pinned out some things, but a verse that came to my heart and my mind as I wrote her just a, her, her anniversary card was that passage in Psalms, Proverbs 31, where it talks about the virtuous woman. There's a little passage in there, verse 29, that says, you know, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. That kind of excel that can be given as a testimony to a woman really comes from the grace of God working in a woman. Where you see Jesus working in a woman's life, in a heart and life. Some of you men here, you don't fully comprehend the beauty of your wife. If you have a wife, if you have a mother, children that loves Jesus, committed to Christ, there's a unique quality that only God can give that woman. It's not going to be found anywhere else. You can't bottle it. You can't sell it. There's no price on it. It's the grace and the presence of Jesus Christ. And every woman who's serious about her life and her future and her family and her children needs to make Jesus Christ the number one pursuit and goal of her life. Because a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. That's the virtuous woman. That's the woman of strength. That's the, the mighty warrior woman. That's, that's the godly woman. He lives within. He's in you. You have what you need. Don't try to be something you're not. Embrace what God has made you to be and enjoy the peace that comes from that that only God gives. And the tenth thing is the Lord's going to empower you to do and to be the mother that God's called you to be. Now, I've used this passage, and it's not out of context. Some might think it is, but it really isn't. He says, you receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And according to this, this verse, you know, we, we talk about it, how God's called us all to be ministers of the gospel. God's called us all to be missionaries in the world that we live in. And we always say that, you know, Jerusalem is our, our place, and Judea is the bigger sphere. And then, then there's, it's, it's like, you know, home, city, state, nation in the world is the way that would really break down. Well, Jerusalem really is, ladies, your Jerusalem's your home, first and foremost. Your Jerusalem is right there. And you're, you're a missionary to your family for the glory of God and for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost. And if you're a godly woman, then you want more than anything else for your children to know Christ, to have an eternity that's sealed and settled with, without fear of the future, that, that in Christ they will have everything they need in life. And when you're walking with God, there's something that's, that comes out of that, that burden for your children to say, I want them to be like Christ. I want them to have Christ in their life. I want them to know eternal life. I don't want my kids to die and go to hell. I want them to know Jesus Christ in his full glory. That comes out of your heart. But here's what God says. I'll give you what you need to make that a reality. I'll be there to empower your life and to, to empower your work. Because really, a, a mother's first witness will be to her children, obviously to her husband. 
And you know, God may see fit to give her ministries in the church where she carries out different missions and opportunities and goes to Belize or wherever else we go in the world to minister to other people. But ultimately, you know, the, the, the bottom line, her first Jerusalem is home with her family, her husband, you know. And there's just no way to do all you need to do, especially, as we said, for some of you who are carrying a burden of also an extra vocation in your life. There's no way any woman in the world can do what God's called us to do by yourself. But again, you're not by yourself. You have the grace of God. And God will aid you, he will comfort you, he will strengthen you, and he will empower you to be what you need to be in the situations of your life. The day that the Lord Jesus Christ came into your life is the day the Holy Spirit came into your life to be your helper, to be your encourager, to be your strength, to be everything you need him to be. And as I said at the beginning of this message, I wanted this day to be an encouragement for moms. Let me just say this by, by, to encourage you. Don't try to do everything by yourself. Learn how to trust the Lord, how to trust him, how to believe him, and how to, how to go to him in prayer. You may not even have the support of others, people in your own family. You may not have the support of a, of a loving husband. You may have children that are difficult, perhaps, or going through some in their own life. But the Spirit of God, as you yield your life to him, will compensate for all these things and give you everything you need to be the woman God's called him to, you to be. If you give him the opportunity and you give him the place to live in you and through you, your life can overflow with that love and that joy and that peace and the patience that you need to be what God's called you to be. Moms, praise God for you. I want all our moms to stand just for a moment because I want to pray for you. And I want to pray a blessing on your life and I want to ask God to bless you and to encourage you and to strengthen you so that when you leave out of this place today, you just walk out thinking, God, I have everything I need in Christ Jesus. Maybe there's something right now in your own heart, moms, that maybe, maybe one of these points the Lord just brought up to you. You know, as one lady said to me today, she said that, that part about guilt and condemnation, she says, I've been going through a lot of that, and I just, I received my freedom from the Lord today. Maybe there's some point the Lord spoke to your heart about in all this. Why don't you day right now? Maybe you've never even trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Right in this moment, open your life to him. Surrender your heart to him. Maybe you felt like you've been distant from the Lord. Don't walk in condemnation. That's not the spirit of God. Receive grace today. Maybe there's a need, a valley you're walking through, some dark time. Trust the Lord. Father, as these women are standing here in your presence, you know every one of them by heart. You know every name. You know every situation in their life. You know their children. You know their children's names. You know the their, their very life issues they all face. Lord, there's so many needs that are represented when we stand in a crowd like this, especially when we talk about the issues of motherhood. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, all those special things that you have laid up for these ladies that perhaps they're not seeing in some regard, that their eyes of understanding would be open, that they might be able to perceive the height, the depth, the length, the breadth of your blessings for them in Christ Jesus. And I pray today would be a day that they would just reach out by faith and say yes to you and entrust you with something going on in their heart and life. Lord, from the, from the woman who's here who feels perhaps maybe the, nobody knows or nobody understands to the one who may be walking in absolute victory today, from one end of that spectrum to the other, we're praying your blessings upon these lives. And that the adversary, the accuser, the condemner would be bound away from their hearts and minds and they would see today how gracious, how loving, and how ever-present you are, ever-present help in time of need, you tell us. And they'd receive that today and open their eyes to you. You'd be glorified in their lives, and you'd pour out heaven on their lives. In the holy name of Jesus, we trust you with this. Do something wonderful in each one of their hearts, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's give these ladies a hand, amen. Could you do that? You may be seated, and God bless you. You know, it's, such a, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today and to preach to, the, to you ladies and thank God for your presence here and for you choosing to be here on the Lord's Day on Mother's Day. Not all moms get that, amen. I'm glad you do. May God increase your tribe. I know some of you are saying, please no more, I got enough. <laughs> May increase that kind of amount of mothers in our midst that love the Lord and are committed to following Christ as the Lord and Savior. I know Mother's Day is a hard day for some, but I want you to know that God's presence is in the midst of all those situations. You trust the Lord today. See what he does on your behalf. 
Amen. Just a couple of things before I call up Brother Tan to make some closing announcements. Be one. If you're first